You can download the answer in the video for free, link in the description. For invincibility frames inside of Godot, go to your player script. Inside, we will add two variables for the system. Health is the amount of health the player has. And can take damage will be used while the player is having invincibility frames, so that they can ignore any incoming damage during that time. We will then create a custom function to handle the damage calculation and invincibility frame logic. This function will hold three built-in variables. Damage amount is the amount of damage that is incoming. Invincible time is the amount of time that the player will be invincible for. And ignore invincible is whether we should ignore the invincibility frames, as the player may have jumped into lava or fallen off the screen. Additionally, we use the equal sign to create a default value for these variables. That way, you don't necessarily require having to write the value of each variable when calling the function, as you can just rely on these default values instead. Now inside of the take damage function, we will first check if we can't take damage and that we are not ignoring the invincibility frames. If so, then we use return. Writing return in this manner will skip all the code below, keeping the code more readable and allowing us to avoid extra indentation for the following code. Then for the damage, we will first minus the damage amount from the player's health. Then we will check if the player's health is less than or equal to zero. If so, then we run our death animation. Then we set the physics process to false so that the player can't move during the death animation as this will stop the physics process function from running. And lastly, we call return again, as to skip the code below this that will hold all the invincibility frame logic. Additionally, in the case that you are interested in this death animation, I will mention more about it at the end of the video, as it doesn't matter too much to this tutorial. Then for the invincibility frames, we will check if the invincibility time is more than zero, meaning that we want the player to be invincible. We then set can take damage to false, as the player is now invincible. And for the animation of the invincibility, we'll use a tween, to create a variable to store this tween, which will establish a new tween using the create tween function. And we will set the transition of the tween to sign to make the animation smoother. Then we grab this new invincibility tween, call the tween property function to grab the player sprite, then modulate dot a or opacity value, which we get the dot a using a colon. Then we move this towards an opacity of 0.5, and we set the total time of this animation to a quarter of the invincibility time. This is because we will have four tween property functions run before the invincibility is complete. Then to have another tween property function run immediately after the previous, we can use the chain function. So we use chain. Then the tween property, we grab the player sprite again, then modulate.a, but instead moving towards an opacity of 1, and we use the same animation time. Then we do this again, but moving this one towards 0.5, then we do it a final time, but moving back to that 1.0 value. Then to make sure the can take damage variable resets to true after we have finished the tween property, on the final tween property that we run, at the end of it, we will grab the finish signal, which is a signal that emits whenever this tween property function completes. Then we use connect to connect this finish signal to a function which we create a custom temporary function here that will simply just set the can take damage to true. Although in the case that you want to connect to an existing custom function that also resets the can take damage and maybe does some other code, then instead of the temporary function, you can just write the name of the custom function that you want to activate whenever the finish signal emits. Now to have an enemy use this invincibility frame system, first I will create a way for enemies to detect a player, which I do by adding the player to a group called player. Then inside of my enemy scene, which uses an area 2D, go to signals, Right click the body entered signal and press connect, select the enemy script and connect it. Then inside of the enemy script, we will check if the body that has entered this area 2D is inside of the group called player, which if so, it means the player has collided with this enemy. So we will grab the player, then activate the take damage function that we just created, passing the damage amount and the amount of time that we want the invincibility to last. Also, we can add whether we want to ignore the invincibility or not. Additionally, because we set a default value before, we don't require passing all three values, as we can just rely on the default value defined earlier. Now in the case that you want to copy my death animation, first, I create a variable to store the tween that will be used for the death animation. This is set to a new tween using the create tween function, and I set the transition to sign so the animation is smooth. Then I grab the tween and use the tween property function, grabbing the player sprite, then modulate.a or transparency value, which we get dot a by using a colon, and we move this towards a value of zero, with a total animation time of 0.2 seconds. Then for changing the scale, without having to create another tween, we can use the same tween, but call the parallel function, which the parallel function will allow this tween property function to run alongside the previous tween property function. And with this one, we grab the player sprite, the scale property, we move it towards vector2.0, which is just a fancy way of writing vector2 with 0, 0, in the brackets. And this is over a total animation time of 0.2 seconds. Additionally, to have the level restart, I grab the finish signal from the tween and use connect to connect that signal to a function, which I connect to a temporary function that will just get tree, which is the core of the scene, then call deferred, which will run the function in the brackets at the end of the current frame, which that function that I will run is the reload current scene function, effectively restarting the level whenever the death animation completes. Now you have a simple invincibility frame system that you can add to any of your 2D Godot games, and don't forget that you can check out the project file, link in the description.